you have your Bibles today, will you turn with me? Thank you, sir. Will you turn with me to Genesis chapter one? <clears throat> Where's that located, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a valid question on an electronic Bible. <laughs> yeah. That? Yeah. That's all we were raised on, but from the beginning. Bless the Lord, we, we have had a written word, a more sure word to be able to follow. It has endeared and endured throughout all of ages. They've tried to rid it, they've tried to burn it. They try to rid our society and our cultures of it, but they just can't do it. Amen? Because it's yeah, God's Word, right. and it shall abide forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Though heaven and earth shall pass away, yet not one jot or tittle shall depart from His law. Amen. Praise God. What God has said is sure, and what God has said will stand. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. So let me say that. You can trust Him. Reminds me of a video we watched one time. You can trust Him. Amen. You can trust God. Amen. What He has said is sure. Uh, we're on this earth for a little span of time, but God's Word has been able to endure. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I tell you what, I put my faith in His Word because it will go, it has gone long before me and will continue to go long after me. Amen. Forever. Amen. Praise God. So that gives me that gives my faith hope right there. It gives me some ability to trust Him. It's like sometimes I don't understand it. Sometimes God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts, and His ways are higher than my ways, and I don't quite get the whole picture and understand it. That's where faith comes in. I either trust Him or I don't. And if I trust Him, I'll be willing to take a step of faith and walk with Him, and let Him reveal His Word to me. Let Him show me that as I trust Him and do as He would ask me to do, that He indeed is God. He can take care of all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm thankful for that this morning. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to turn and we're going to look at the uh, starting at around verse 27. And I have in my notes 26, so I guess I will set context with verse 26. This is as God was creating the heavens and the earth and all that fills them, all that's therein. Here we see in verse 20, 26. At the end of verse 25, after he had created everything after its own kind, he said it was good. I wanted to start out with that note today, that whatever God does is good. Amen. Amen. God is good, and whatever he does is good. Amen. And I believe that's what we, we see when we look in the eyes of our children, into that innocence, Amen. that God is good. They are so pure. They, are, they're, 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 they haven't been grown up and pressed out of measure in areas yet. You know, they're just living and breathing and they're just having their being in your presence. In your family. Allowing your love to be imparted to them. Your care to be imparted to them. That's why it's so important that we have families that can care for their children. When you find that the families are, are divided and separated and destroyed by divorce, then it puts a great strain on raising the children in an atmosphere of care, it brings a lot of confusion. Right. Amen. Amen. So God has entrusted us with little ones that we might be a representation of Him. And that is really what today's message will be a little bit about. Amen. We are a representation of Him, His workings in the earth. And so in Genesis chapter 25, He said, it was good. He moved on to go ahead and do the best yet. He wanted to go ahead and take care of the... He saved the best for last. You guys ever do that? I'm like that. When I eat my dinner, you ever watch me? Whatever's on my place, plate at the end. It's not because I don't eat all my food. I, I was taught to eat everything on my plate. What you see on my plate at the end is what you know I like the best. <laughs> I like to finish my meal with what I enjoy the best. And God was the very same way. He saved the best for last. After everything that was created, that moves and that creeps, God created the best and saved the best for last. So in verse 26, he said this, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God, after he said, let us, he created so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. Whoa, wait a second here. Uh, that's interesting. 
God created man, male and female. It's interesting. I want to talk about that today. Praise the Lord. Yet male and female are in his image. Amen? Amen. So that's what I want you to see out of this. God created man in his own image, and he created a male and female. <coughs> so men and women alike, we are all created in the image and likeness of God. Amen. Praise God. God has some things to show us today, I believe, about that. And God blessed them in verse 28 and said what? Be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Male and female he created he them. And the first thing that God did when he created man, saving the best for last, was to bless man. Male? To bless man. Female? To bless them. them. To bless them. Let me say this. If you're going to move into God's best in the earth, you have to be a part of his program, a part of his plan. Unless he created you to be a eunuch. And Paul said there ain't many like that. Okay? He's created you to be a eunuch. That's one thing. To serve God and serve him alone. That's one thing. But God has created man. Male and female he has created them. And he has blessed them. To come into the ultimate blessing of life. I'm not talking about the materialistic expression of obtaining the things. The boy with the most toys at the end wins. I'm talking about coming into... God's fulfillment of your life, you will have to experience it with a spouse. And guess what? It won't, if you're a male, it won't be another male. Another male. <laughs> it just can't be. It goes against his creation. Amen. I'm going to be a faithful preacher. I'm going to preach what the Word of God shows me. That's right. He created male and female. It's in male and female that the next promise, the, the, the big promise to it, is there. That he blessed them and said, be fruitful. He can't just bless us individually to have the fulfillment of what's going to happen when we're united with our spouse, whether it's male or female. Okay, We have to be united with our spouse to be able to have the ultimate expression of life, which is to be blessed in our fruitfulness. Fruitfulness, not just in the terms of children, but fruitfulness in the terms of expression. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself because the scripture is going to reveal exactly what he's talking about. Exactly what he's talking about. So I think that's very exciting. So if we ever wonder sometimes what our position should be when it comes to marriage, there is no question or debate if I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. God created a male and female, and he blessed them and said multiply. Right so I'm going to leave it to that. I'm not here to bash on little things. You know what I'm saying. The, today's society is so twisted, so warped. <clears throat> People want to try to make allowance for their feelings, their accommodation for, I don't know, it's just I can't even comprehend it. But you know what I'm saying? They want to make allowance for it. You can't do it. God's word shows it as it is. Amen. Amen. Thank God for brotherly love. I love the brotherhood. I just don't want to sleep with brotherhood. Amen. Let me tell you how it is, okay? <laughs> Something wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. Moving on. <laughs> I'm just be faithful. Just be faithful to what God told me today. So I'm just be faithful. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28 is where we see that God saved the best for the last. So praise the Lord. You and I need today to know we are the best. He saved the best for last. And it's in this place now, saving the best for last, that we're going to experience what God has intended for his whole creation. He didn't create creation just to save the best for last. Let's not have something to do with it. You know, he said, have dominion over it. He said to go out and possess it. He told Joshua that everywhere the sole of your foot treads, you're going to possess that. So praise God. If we're going to walk with God, every promise in him, in Christ Jesus is what? It's yes and amen. I can possess all things as long as my heart is yielded and open to God. And so today we find out that that doesn't happen just alone. That as we grow in our lives, and yes, I'm speaking to young men that have not come into marriage or young ladies that have not come into marriage, that your best is yet to come. Marriage is not a bad thing. Marriage is a good thing. God has created marriage so that you can be a part of the ultimate blessing and expression of life. Amen. And it'll become more and more clear as we go through this thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm just speaking what the Lord showed me today. This is really out, a little bit out of where we've been, but that's okay. just want to stay faithful. Mark chapter 10, verse 6. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me there. 
So we see that God has established and ordained marriage for the purpose of being fruitful and having dominion. And let me say this, ultimately what it boils down to, to being in his blessing, being an expression is the ultimate way I want to describe that. Being an expression of God's blessing. That's what it is. Okay? So that, that I think, helps me put it into uh, uh, pretty clear terms. And in Mark chapter 10, I'm going to actually probably start looking at verse 6 here. And this is where they were trying to trip Jesus up about, you know, a woman's been divorced and married seven times, you know, in the resurrection, you know, whose who's wife she's going to be and stuff like that, you know. So he gets past it all. He says, he says, you know, for the hardness of your heart, the divorce principle was written. He says in verse 6, he says, but from the beginning, why in the world did we start in Genesis today? Because it is in the beginning. Amen. So from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. When God created man, he made them in his own image and in his likeness. And he made them male and female, which means that the both, the both represent the complete image of God. Not just the male, not just the female. Both represent individually no because it's just one aspect you see what I'm saying today but both as they come together where he blessed they represent the complete representation of God his likeness his nature you'll see it as we go on God's word is so powerful it's so good he reveals to us and he says, in the beginning, God made a male and female. And for this cause, a man will leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. And the twain shall be one flesh. So then that they are no more twain, but one. And we know verse 9 says, wherefore, what, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put us up. Why is that so, so important? Because what has come together is what God has intended to represent him in the earth. Not just you as a male or a female. But when you become married and joined, he says, you become one flesh. And it's what I desire to reveal from eternity past and what I'm looking forward to in eternity future, what I desire to reveal to the present world who I am. And who he is is a God that's sitting on, I'm going to go right to the end of the matter, sitting on a throne alone. That's why Jesus said that you're going to rule and reign with me because God's looking to eternity future for you and I to sit with him in his throne. And I'll give you the word on it today. I just jumped ahead, but I'm going to give you the scripture references so that way when it goes out on the web, people got it. That's the purpose of life. He created us in his image and after his likeness, male and female created he them, that we would come together to become one flesh, because in that one flesh we would be blessed, and we would represent the creator. We would represent the heart of eternity, what will always be in him, a union with us and Christ, sitting, seated in heavenly places on his throne with him, ruling and reigning for all eternity. He's tired of being alone, Amen. church. Amen. He's waiting patiently for the precious fruit of the earth. He desires that none should perish. Right. Does it make sense to you today? Amen. So there's some things that happen then when we're walking out this mere mortal existence here. There's some things that happen as we go through the earth. That as we mature and we find that woman, echo of my eye, that I'm willing to leave everything for. I don't care, Mommy. I don't care, Daddy, that you've raised me for 16, yeah, well, 16 years. Yeah. For 16 years, I'm willing to leave it all to pursue my bride. I know you've kept the roof over my head. I know you bought the car and I probably owe you for that. <laughs> but I gotta leave it all because I love this woman and something happens within me that begins to draw me away 
from what I've, my comfort zone, what I've enjoyed my entire life, and begin to cleave and begin to hold on to with all of my heart. I begin to have hopes that I can spend all of my life with her. I begin to dream dreams that allow us to see life through each other's eyes. I begin to look at life in a completely new way. It never happened when I was living at home alone. It's something that changed the way I looked at life. And what it was, it was the activation of God's love. When God's love came alive in my heart, and we could sit there and rationalize away, oh, it was just lust. No, it wasn't lust. Lust wouldn't endure 30 years. Amen. Yeah, that's right. No, when God's love, which came in a very, we, 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 we preach and teach different versions, right? This is a, probably, I'll talk about an Eros love. It's where you get the word right. Eros. Philadelphia's brother did love. Like I said, I love y'all, but I ain't gonna sleep with you. But Eros is like, man, I got to know my wife. I've got to become one with my spouse. I've got to be able to share it. our souls. They need to become one. We need to intermingle. We need to be fruitful and multiply. You get married and try not to do that, that's that just doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? If that department shut down when you get married, I submit to you, you're missing out on a big part of the blessing of marriage, it's okay. That's, that's another type of love that God placed within our lives as individuals that comes alive. And I, and I find myself fulfilling God's word and the reason he created me to be. When we find ourselves fulfilling that purpose within our life, two are better than one, the Bible says. I know many times life can deal us some really sour stuff. I know that I'm not here belittling nobody that's gone through issues in their life. No, I am not. I'm just telling you today, put your faith in God because God is great. Amen. God is able. God can heal anything. All you got to do is get yourself back to you and say, God, yes, I see it. I trust it. I want to get back into that blessing. I don't want to stay where I've been stuck. Amen. Well, man, but the old ball and chain don't want to come on. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to get with the program. I know. I know how that works. Mom Bible says love them. Love them anyway. Keep loving on them. Keep witnessing to them. Keep sharing the love of God. And I guarantee you, the more you show them Jesus, the more they're going to come out of themselves. You, you, when, you people, when you show people Jesus, they want to do one or two things. Run. They either yeah. want to come or they want to run. <laughs> That's right. So what I'm saying, church, is be a man or woman of God today. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying love them with the love of God. Then they won't run. And if they do run, and you're sharing the love of God, right, then you can't do anything about that anyways. But my Bible gives me hope. It says that the unsaved spouse, or even the spouse that just gets stuck in the room, they can be saved by the other person. The other person will just continue to be a man or woman of God. Keep praying, keep trusting, keep believing, because your God is great and he's big. Amen. He's able. He's got the heart of kings. We talked about him changing the entire course of nations. Go on, go on. You can't believe him for changing your marriage? That's because we're fickle. We go in and out. Amen? Side note there for you. Just a little penny. <laughs> That's because of us, not him. He is able. He's always able. We're the one that gets stuck. So I'm asking you today, put your eyes on Jesus. Get unstuck. Amen. If, you, if you're suffering in those areas, and I know you young marriages, you know, a lot of you, you other folks can come in here and say, oh, these young folks, they don't even know what's going on. And, oh, trust me, I've been in counsel sessions. They know what's going on. Amen. They got the hurdles. They got the stuff. They got the same stuff you went through that divided you and maybe you didn't even get complete healing on. They had that stuff already. And they're moving through it. So I just want to help us embrace each other for who we are. We are. There is no nothing here that isn't common to me. That's right. These are issues we all suffer, we all struggle with. And every single one of us has to have faith to continue to press on, Amen. press forward, and continue to walk this out in God's blessing. Amen? So he created a male and female for this cause. He created them that they would be an expression, a representation of who he is and what he wants, what he's longing for. You can't lose sight of that. You cannot lose sight of what God wants. God wants very much. Not only for you and your marriage to be blessed, but for you to understand how it's a representation of even the hope of what you have is to sit with him forever. I want to be with him forever. I love Amen. him. I know you do too. I mean, we, you get so caught up in worship, you just, it's like, I don't care where I'm at in the water. I don't care who's in here. It doesn't. I'm the part of the planet. I'm in a spiritual realm. A lot of times I've got my eyes shut, maybe a bad thing, but I'm just telling you, they come in and take me out at that point. I don't care because I'm with Jesus already. You know what I mean? I've made the transition from the mortal into the immortal. I, I'm there in the spirit. It's like, take me out. I don't care. I don't want to be here anyways. I mean, I love my wife. My children. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 don't get me wrong. But you know what I'm saying? 
God's presence is so precious and so good. All I want to be is with Him. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. All the cares completely fade away. Amen. Oh, it's just wonderful. It's like, wow, praise God. So that's where we're going. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord. So, so Jesus said that over here in Mark. i got to point that out. It was the Lord Himself sharing that passage with us. He said it's for this cause that we would be joined together and be one flesh. Now, if you'll turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to cover some more scripture to show you what now we can see God has revealed by the Spirit from the beginning of time, from the beginning of creation, spoken to us while he was yet in his person incarnate has been revealed now to his saints who continue to wait for his return. Okay? I want to show you that because, okay, we can sit here and embrace these truths, but it doesn't make it any easier for me to walk in it. It doesn't even make it very clear for me to walk in it. So God has revealed by his spirit, and that's very, very important for us to see what God has revealed to us about this mystery. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse... 9 says this. Paul goes that God has made known unto us the mystery of his will. Isn't that awesome? If you have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying today, you know, you're, you know that God is making it plain to you the mystery of his will. Marriage is not something we just do and try. Marriage is a fulfillment of the expression of my living and my being. Okay, so that's interesting. It's an interesting thing for Paul to phrase it this way. He's made known unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. And so if you turn forward with me a little bit for, further into chapter 3 there, let's look at a few more scriptures. Paul says over here in chapter 3, he says, For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, he says, how by how that by revelation he has made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Okay? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Capital S, Holy Spirit. Verse 9 says, this mystery has created such a burden within Paul. Paul's heart is to help all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. What is the fellowship of the mystery? The mystery is not some abstract revelation or piece of knowledge, but it is about a living relationship. It is a fellowship that God desired that while we were yet in our sins, and we could not have fellowship with him, that God took care of the matter. And so salvation has appeared unto all men, for there's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. But in Jesus, we have found favor in God's sight, because Jesus paid the ultimate price. He sacrificed his life that we may live. And so that's what we said, in, in the, that there is nothing that matters Circumcision, uncircumcision, nothing that matters. Whether you follow this set of rituals or you don't follow this set of rituals or laws, nothing matters but a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what Galatians says, right? Amen. Nothing matters but that new creature. And so God has made a way when there was no way for you and I to become born from above, born of the Spirit of God, born in a way now where we can have a relationship with Him again. And just as sure as the man and the woman represent God's plan of his church naturally here in here, I have to say this, that as you became born again, God does not desire for you to be alone. Even before you spend eternity with him, God has created you to be a member in particular. A member will not live and thrive apart from God's body. Cut my finger off, guarantee you it's going to start getting green, decomposed, fleshy. It's going to start stinking. It's going to do all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Go turn back to dust. We have to stay connected to his body. 
And so when I become a new creature in Christ Jesus, I find life in my attachment to his body. And he supplies. And I grow. And so I have to side note. That one was free. <laughs> And so here I want, to, I, want to, I want to continue to look at this, this fellowship that we have now with the Lord. This fellowship is a fellowship that is the, the revelation, the spiritual revelation of the natural reality that we get to partake of. The natural reality of him saving the best for last so that male and female could be blessed and be an expression of what God truly desires from eternity past to eternity future. What God truly desires. Now, we see what the fellowship is all about. The fellowship is about that we may be one with him. All you got to do is start to read Ephesians chapter 4. And you start to see it poured out. Paul pours it out. There's one God. There's one body, one faith, one baptism. There's going to be one thing happening in heaven with the saints. The rest of everybody could be a servants. All of the angels, cherubim, seraphim, you know, all the other people outside of Christ, because there will be people outside of Christ there in, in eternity future, okay, they won't, be, they won't enjoy the same position and place we have. You want proof of that? It says right there, uh, Jesus himself, the Lord God himself said it. When Jesus says something, man, I take it to bank. I take it to bank, because if you can't trust what he said, you got no salvation. But he said of, of all, the men, all the people that were born of women, there was no greater than John the Baptist, and yet John the Baptist is the least in the kingdom of heaven. You'll like that John's going to be a servant forever. When you read Revelations and you see all the servants that are going to be there, it's not talking about us as saints. In Christ Jesus, if you're part of his bride, I'm telling you what, you are not servant. You are, I hate to say this, but it's true. You're Lord of all. He's called us to be kings and priests of the God. And in him we shall be one. My wife is no less than me. We are one. And he's showing what marriage is. It's a representation of oneness. Whatever she does reflects on him. Whatever That's I do right. reflects on him. Amen. Whatever we, the church, do reflects on him. He's That's our right. God. You see where he's going with this? It's awesome. God so loves us. This is what it's all about. And so I want to have you now turn with me to where we were uh, a couple weeks ago, Ephesians chapter 5. Just flip over a little bit further. And I want to pick up just a few verses here to, to help maybe define a few things today for us. Let God just speak to us a little bit. In Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 15, he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. If God's starting to show you what's happening, it's time out for your own agenda. Amen. It's time out for your own way. Make an allowance for your own stuff. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. When we refuse to walk with circumspectness, taking and observing and taking in and walking accordingly, he says we're walking foolish. You're very presumptuous. You're very foolish because you're just taking for granted that God's just going to be there for you. No, no, no. Only as you walk circumspectly, keeping your eyes upon what it is, the purpose God has you there for, can God bless it Amen. and continue to bless it. Everything else is presumption. And mostly then we're seeking him for a way out because we got ourselves into a ditch again. We're like, oh, Lord, get me out of this mess. And God is faithful. He loves us. And so it'll help you. But God didn't intend for his life to be continually pulling believers out of ditches. That's right. God called you to rule and reign. If I get, get there today before it's all over, you're going to find out that he's desiring the overcomer. The overcomer is not the person who falls in a ditch every day. Amen. Amen? The overcomer is the ability. He's the, he's the guy that keeps his eyes on the Lord and is able to walk down water, and all the ditches that would trip him up, they don't trip him up. That's right. Yeah. Amen? That's who God is looking for. He's looking for a person of, of faith. And so... We want, to, we want to walk not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. They're very evil. They're self-serving. I love, I love the way the Lord helped us get a personal definition out of that word evil. Evil means self-serving, selfish. What's evil? When I put myself above the needs of everybody else. When I put my life above anything else. That's evil. That's selfish. God is able. It's like, who am I to do that to God? He created me. He gives me breath. He can take the next heartbeat if That's he wants. Right. It's like, man, we don't got a reality check sometimes. Because we live in a natural world. That the devil's just screaming. It's the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, just screaming. It's all about yourself. It's all about what you want. It's about living it the way you want to live it without any revelation, reality, or anything. If it feels good, do it. Be on with your life. Get it on. Do it. 
That's what the world's all about. It's horrible. Yeah. And, and so we got a generation that has been raised up in a culture that does nothing but that. It's on all the media. It's on all the music. It's on television. It's, it's, in, our, it's in our all hands and our portable devices nowadays. I mean, we have streaming media all the time, and it's constantly shoving the message of Antichrist down our throat. Amen. It's trying to make a, 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 a world of people completely numb. Completely numb to the reality that God is God and he's waiting for us to, to come to him and to love him and to be a part of the life that he's designed and desired for you. Amen. Just because the, the devil's out there roaring in the last days these perilous times are happening doesn't mean I've got to listen to it. That's right. He can roar all he wants for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And believe me, my little, my little, my, my children have been raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And guess what? Let me speak this. My grandbabies are going to be raised Amen. in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Not because I have anything to do with it, because I trust what God had me train my children That's in. That's right. Amen. And as my children have been trained, I know they will continue, they will continue that legacy. Amen. They will pass it on. Yep. The curse of being lost was broken when I gave my heart to Jesus 30 years ago. Amen. My family didn't serve Christ, but guess what? As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. That curse has been broken 30 years ago. And I've got children and grandchildren. And I've got brothers and sisters and mothers who do the will of God to follow me. As I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. They're a part of my life because I connected with his program. Amen? Amen. I'm nobody. I'm just a brother that loves the Lord. But if you will love the Lord, you and your entire family shall be saved. Amen. Is that not what the word of God says? Yes. That's what the word of God says. says is your house shall be saved. Amen. All that call upon the Lord shall be saved. I'm so thankful for that. All you got to do is have a little bit of faith. That's right. Faith is a little mustard seed. Yeah. And God said it will grow into a giant. The biggest of all herd plants. Praise God. Amen. Doesn't mean everybody's going to be perfect. That's right. Amen. I don't have to go there. You know that. It says all the air can set up and lodge up in it. Yeah. Doesn't mean it'll be perfect. But there, there ain't no church expression here that's perfect. Amen. You can come and find fault with anybody, anytime, all the time. Why? Because we're mortal. That's right. Amen. Only one perfect. Amen. It's a lower. God it calls us to be perfect, so we're going to try real hard that's right. to walk in those shoes. But you know what? We're going to miss the mark. But that's where love and humility comes in. Forgive us, forgive us Lord. And if I've offended, forgive. Amen. It's not my heart that I would have I've hurt somebody. We do stuff ignorantly. We're not yet there. <laughs> and he can see everything. He sees it all. Amen. So praise the Lord. He is worthy, amen? amen. He is good. He is God. How many trust him today? Amen. How many love him today? Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We can't even describe how much we love you. So Ephesians chapter 5, we know it starts to talk about marriage. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, so I'll peruse this pretty quick. It says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. But actually, I probably missed 17 for you, didn't I? I said, wherefore, be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, be, yeah, right. So if we're going to walk circumspectly, we're going to do that because we're, we're wise. We know what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk in wine, where it is success, but be filled with the Spirit. Then we talked about speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. We talked about the purpose of that is so we can encourage each other. You come in here professing about what God has done for you, I'm telling you what, you put faith in somebody's heart Amen. before they even know it. You need to listen to last week's message or the week before. It was a good message. If you come in praising God, giving him thanks, like the Bible says, you're supposed to give him thanks in all things. And I don't see people doing it when they walk in the door. I just don't see it. I don't see him doing it all the time. But if you start to apply that to your life, guarantee you're going to encourage everything in your life because you're going to cause everybody to look at Jesus. Amen. You're, going to, you're going to allow the wife or the husband that's been feeling down to go, ahead. you're right. I got God, thanks, man. He was there today even when I didn't see him. You know, you're going to get him right out of their stuff, and you're going to get him pointed right back to the Lord. That's what happens when we give God thanks in all things. It gets people back to the reality. Yeah, God's in control. Amen. God takes care of the matter. You know, so we got to be about that. Get last week's message or whatever it was the week before. We publish it on the web, so you don't even got to download it, get a CD anymore. You know, it's just, it's always there. So praise God, Drew is real faithful to do that for us. Amen. But put it this way, I listened to it. I was on the web the other day, and man, I started, and then the Spirit just caught me up. I never listened to any messages a second time. The Spirit just caught a hold of me. I was like, I listened to, I listened to the whole forty-five minute piece. I was like, wow, that was good. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, whoever the brother was that was preaching, you got to realize it was Christ through me, okay? It wasn't me. You know, that was a good message. <laughs> I encourage you throughout the week when things get tough to go out there. We do that for your blessing. Amen. So that you can stay connected with what God is sharing to you through his word. Amen? 
Uh, so we're going to move forward here. It says, giving thanks always for all things. Oh my gosh, did I just quote that? Verse 20. <laughs> Unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We know how important it is to respect God. He taught us about church discipline a few weeks ago, how we handle things properly. It says in verse 22, now we're going to move forward with that. Once we start to treat everybody properly, we're going to make sure we apply this in our marriage. So it says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their husbands and everything. I can give you a parallel passage to that very quickly. Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Let's see what Peter's got to say about that, so we're not listening to Brother Paul, because he was a single guy. Okay? <laughs> Peter was married, so we can listen to a married man. What a married man. It's, it's okay for you single guys to say that about the woman. Because you don't know what it's like. No, I'm talking, Peter was married, so Peter can say some things. We'll listen to him, too. Okay, so 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 to 4. He had a wife himself, so he knows what he's talking about. Okay? Let the word of God be established. You know, mouth out of a couple witnesses here. <laughs> you guys got me with that one? All right. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not just trying to give you Pauline doctrine here. I'm trying to tell you this is the revelation of God. And I don't mean Pauline in a feminine way, okay? Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that they may without the word be won by the conversation of the living, outliving, outworking of the love of God in of the wives. See, I told you about that. That's a promise of God right there. If your spouse is acting up, we can still do it. We can still pray. We can still love. We can still live and expect God to move. Don't ever limit God. His arm is not short that he cannot save. Amen? Amen. He is able. So while they, the unsaved spouse or the one in trouble, the one that's stumbling, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, like I said, you know, the finger when it's got to get pointed, it's got to come back to us. It's like, okay, Lord, you know, I blew it there. Let, I kind of let some things out of my mouth, show the sad, a little angry, a little upset. Don't you think that we don't all go through that? Because I know we all do. I've had y'all in my office. I know what all is going on here. <laughs> it says, who's adorning when he's talking to these wives? Let it not be, of the, let, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair and wearing of gold or putting on apparel, but let it be of the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. He goes on to give examples of women of old, how they were, they exercised this kind of living. They showed fear of God in their life. They, they worked with great humility and respect. Sarah called Lord, Abraham Lord, you know. I mean, they, it's very important to see our position in our marriage, how to respect one another. So again, that was a witness for the wives there, you know, just to see it's, it's not Paul, a man that's not married, talking about something he has no idea about, right? This is talking about Peter who had to go home and face the woman every day too, okay? So now let's flip the, flip the page here. Let's talk about the man. Let's let the Holy Spirit, you know, put his finger out our nose there too for us men now, okay? And so we go back to Ephesians chapter 5, and we see that in verse uh, 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. There's that sacrificial love. It's not a tit for tat. It's not, I'll do this because you did this or, or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? It's sacrificial love. That he's doing it. He's pouring out his life. He's, he's laying it down and sacrificing for the church because there's a greater purpose involved. I need you to get that. There's a greater purpose involved. That he might set it apart. He might sanctify it. That's what that word sanctify means. He might set it apart and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word for the purpose of what? That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy, which is separate, that it should be separate. It is not him embracing the world, the world's philosophies, the world's ways, the world's adornment. It's Amen. separate. It's the beauty of the Lord. It's been cleansed by his word. Amen. He's He's cared for it with all of his heart that she might always adore him. So ought to men love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and flesh of his bones. 
That's interesting. He said that the two shall become one flesh. We have become flesh of his bones. His structure. Believe me, God's got a structure in the earth. God's purposes at work from eternity past. He's had men serve him, men and women of God serve him, who were nothing more than a representation, an outworking of his government in the earth. Even though this world is under the power of the prince, you know, it's under the rule, the power of the prince, of the, whatever, the prince of the power of the air, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Satan's at work in this world does not mean that God is not in control. In fact, God is in control to the degree that he's working his kingdom out in the midst of darkness. Amen. He's dispelling darkness at every corner. That's why we are light in him. Amen. And so God is honored by his church that loves him. God is glorified by his church that loves him. Just as a man is glorified by a woman, his wife. Let's put a finer point on it. Not just some woman, okay? But his <laughs> wife that loves him. And a woman is honored, more specifically the wife, is honored when the husband lays down his life to care for her as well. There's glory revealed in that. And so today, we, when we worship him in spirit and truth, we're bringing great glory to God. There may not be a whole lot of people here to see it naturally, but I'm telling you what, my eyes say that we're in front of a great cloud of witnesses. Amen. Right. We're in front, of, we are spiritually in touch with the, the congregation that's seated in eternity. Yeah. The church of the firstborn, Revelation calls it. We are seeing great men and women of God who came down on the scene when Jesus went up the mount and they talked to him and he transfigured. There's people watching in on us all the time. Oh, the Spirit of God would not move here. That's right. Our ministering angels who behold the face of our Father when we were talking about the, the guardian angels that Jesus was talking about. Jesus said it. Take it as gospel. We've been assigned angels. They behold the face of our Father. Don't you think they don't see our worship, our love for God? Man. So we don't have the natural world looking in on us. Big deal. Amen. We have the eternal heavenly host looking in on us. Amen. They want to know that this is the church of God. It is the church of God. Revelation talks about that. That God gives to his messengers. He, he gives them messages and he, he shares with his church. It's, it's, it's watched over in eternity. God is jealous of his church. It's his bride. He wants to wash it. Spotless. He's taking note of everyone's life. How we live it. He is glorified by us when we come to worship him and glorify him. Amen? Amen. It's a powerful thing. He's looking for and longing for, like I said, the end of the matter. Him to be able to rule and reign with a bride. A queen, if you will. Amen? Now, I know the word doesn't say we're queens, but, <laughs> but I'm just telling you, he's looking for a bride. Amen. And I look forward to that day where we as church can be with him forever, for eternity. Amen. He's got more plans to work out. He's got more things going to happen. There's going to be an administration of his kingdom yet to come. This is a dispensation that's very special to us. He saved the best for last Amen. in his creation. This mortal world is going to pass away. His eternal world will come to pass where people no longer die. But not everybody's going to be in Christ. It's a very special thing to think about. When I watch these young babies be born this week, it just blows my mind because I melt down when I start to consider the eternal purposes of God. Mm -hmm. That God has given another soul that was created with another purpose. Amen. With another spirit that comes from heaven. That he might grow, experience the love, the care, the nurture of those that love him. To eventually become his own man or woman. To be able to take up the reins of their destiny and say, Lord, I'll follow you Amen. and do what you've created me to do. And find him working out great exploits for God. Not because he can do it in his own strength or ability, but because he loves the Lord God. And like I said, God takes every person that's humble, abandoned to their own agendas, and he uses them for greatness. Amen. Man, that's powerful. I could want greatness. You could want greatness. And as much as we want it, we can get it. It's when we abandon ourselves to his will that God can bring you into the places that he's designed for you. Amen. He's created you that you would be overcomers. He's created you that you would be a glorious church. He's created you that nations would bow. Whether he sends us to the nations or whether he sends us to our own community, it doesn't matter to me. It's at least it's God sending us. Amen? We need to look at it just that way. 
So let's finish up today with a couple of thoughts. I was sharing with us uh, here about the, the duty, the, the responsibility of a husband. Okay? And I want to look at uh, the, the end of the manner now. Verse 31 it says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as, as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You can see that the, the great mystery, the fellowship of the mystery, is God's longing for his bride. He's longing for his church to come home to be a part of his life. That we as natural people, we can experience the eternal revelation of God very naturally. God even gives us a love to be able to have it happen. The eros kind of love, you know, and the phileo kind of love. We can have this feeling of love, and we can have this you know, sensual love, and we can have all these things in operation. I tell you, everything that, com that is comes from God. Everything. He's a giver of every good gift. Amen. And about the first time we say that love ain't from God, you're really missing the mark because God is love. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So God gives us these expressions of love, even though they be natural, not agape love, unconditional love. God gives us these expressions of love so that we can, outside of Christ, as mere men, as mere mortals, as mere women, we can experience the eternal revelation of God, the mystery of God in marriage. But then in Christ we begin to see just as the Old Testament is Christ concealed and the New Testament is Christ revealed, we can, ex we can see the purpose for it. We can see why it is. We can see what the Lord desires and what he's hungry for. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3, in verse, verse 1 through 3, we quote these a lot, but I'm going to read them today to us. It says, Behold what a manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knows him not. Beloved, now are we not, <clears throat> or now are we the sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has that hope in himself, he purifieth himself, even as he's pure. If you don't walk with the revelation knowledge in your heart about why you serve God and what purpose it is, you won't purify yourself. Amen. But if you walk knowing that he's coming back for me so I can be with him forever, then you'll begin to make sure that you live uprightly. You'll walk uprightly. You'll allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you and quicken in you what not to do and what to do and all those great things. You know, We let the Holy Spirit deal with that. We don't pass Amen. on law. Amen. Praise God. In Revelation chapter 3, I'm going to speak two more scriptures or so before I close. He spoke of this last week to the church of Philadelphia. He said, And to the angel of the church, the messenger of the church of Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy and is true. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. And we've been talking a little bit about the keys of the kingdom of heaven, so I'm not going to talk about that right now. You know where I've been going with that. We'll continue to let the Lord reveal that to us. But I want you now to flip the page if you have to, or just go a little further down that chapter, verse 20 and 21. The Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open, the door. The Lord's not opening this door. This is a door that only you and I can open. He stands at the door and knocks. He says to anyone that will open the door I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To grant him that overcometh to sit with me in my throne. To those that overcome, he grants the privilege to sit with him in his throne. Like I said, the problem with the throne is right now it's alone. God's lonely. He's looking for his, his bride. He's looking for his saints to be able to take that place, to rule and reign with him, to sit with him. It's just awesome. Complete unmerited favor we found in Christ Jesus. Amen. Complete. I don't got to do anything to earn this but love him. Thank you, Lord. To trust him. 
Allow him to help me see the realities of life and why sometimes I need to do the right things when everything is coming against me, when, when, when the problems are arising and the storm's brewing and, and, and my spouse is yelling and, and, and everything just seems like it's coming against me. I need to find strength to realize, God, I trust you. I trust you. You're going to pull me through this. I don't want to do the wrong thing to discredit you. And God can calm the storm. God can work it out to show you that God is able. And then you begin to find the strength and the grace to overcome. You begin to find the heart that knows with all assurance that I know I will sit on the throne with him. I love him and he loves me. And today, he stands at the door and knocks. But we have to open. We're looking for the keys of the kingdom of heaven because we know that those keys will lock and unlock. That they'll bind and they'll loose. But he says, you know, I'm going to go ahead and stand at this door and knock. And I'm asking to be let in. If we don't let him in, there's no way we can even begin to pursue the keys of the kingdom. Do you understand that? God wants to deal with first things first. What good does it do to talk about obtaining the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the key of David if we can't, first of all, open the door and unlock this door so the Lord can come in? We need to let the Lord come in so that our marriages can be whole. We cannot serve God effectively if we're at war in our life. I'm going to close with this thought. I'm done with the word because the Lord gave me this on the way in. Some people get married, they got prenups. I mean, I was just like coming to the church and you guys downloading, you know? Some people have prenups. You know what prenups are? Just in cases. Right. They're, no. Re what recipe for failure. Yeah, the recipe for failure. You know what they really are? They're like, this is mine. You ain't getting it. Selfishness. That's what it is, selfishness. It's no. self. Not right, it's uh, exactly it's what the Lord showed me. It is self. In other words, I choose to reserve the right to be my own person, to still have part of my life for me. Right. That's what a prenup is. Well, my Bible tells me the two shall become one flesh. Guess what? They're not becoming one flesh when you got prenups, because what mine is yours and yours is mine. <laughs> So even if you don't have prenups, if you get married and you still have that thought in the back of your mind, that I have a bit of my life, woman, that you can't touch, <laughs> it's just as bad as a prenup. It's not right in God's eyes. Because anybody that's coming to him thinking they're going to be a part of his church and thinks they're keeping a part of their life, they need to think again. Yeah. That's why God gave me the analogy so I could see it. You give it all to Jesus. You give it all to him. Don't hold out. Don't have prenups, church. Amen. It isn't about having a back door of escape that I can still enjoy my life the way I want to enjoy it. Oh, no. I give it all to him. Amen. That's right. So today we speak against the prenups, if you will, of the spirit. All right? Can we all agree with that? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this time together. We know your heart is to be one with your body, with your bride. We know, Lord, that your heart is that you might seat us in heavenly places, Lord, with Christ Jesus upon a throne to rule and reign with you. Lord, that you would have fellowship with us. Lord, we know the mystery's been revealed. So today we see the responsibility upon us, and that is to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, knowing and understanding what your will is. And so, Lord, I thank you today. Lord, you've given us natural marriages to express spiritual, eternal realities. Lord, let us today be faithful as spiritual people to walk in spiritual realities accurately, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Those are spiritual realities. Lord, we love you. We look forward to the day that we can rule and reign with you, not because we're worthy, Lord. Lord, we're going to be just happy to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. But Lord, we love you nonetheless. And we know that love that you placed in our heart for you, Lord, that we can share it for all eternity. So, Lord, help us, Lord, now to walk it out in this world, being a representation of your love. If we're married, we're married. Let us do it with all honor and dignity and glory, Lord, that it would glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that we could put away the spiritual nups. Lord, that we wouldn't allow ourselves to hold on to what attitudes I think are right. 
Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that as we would serve you, that even our spouses, if we're having issues, even our spouses will be saved. They'll be won by our chaste conversation we have with you with fear. Lord, and trembling, Lord, we love you. We respect you. We're not here just to fill some time. Lord, we love you, and we ask, Lord, that you will bless us now as your people. Yes. Lord, that you would take care of our families, our marriages, yes. our little ones, Lord, yes. giving them a safe haven to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord, away and apart from this world system, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name and the saints said. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.